Hey everyone, welcome back to our movie news. We have just hit 40,000 subscribers on the channel, a number I never expected us to hit. Thank you so, so much for your support. Whether you're an old or new subscriber, your support has been incredible. I know many YouTubers say this, but I genuinely never imagined I'd even hit a thousand subscribers, let alone 40,000 of them. So for hitting this milestone, I wanted to tell you the story Story of how I became our movie news. And if you don't care about that, then that's fine. Trust me, I know it's not that big of a deal, but I was thinking about my journey to where I am today, and I thought that maybe some of my subscribers may want to know how I became our movie news and my story before the channel was created. So that is what this video is all about. I think it will be a story that many of you guys might not expect, so let's get into it. To really understand my story, we we have to go back to my childhood. Now, I always grew up loving superheroes. Throughout my childhood, I had Superman toys and costumes, and the same went for Batman and Spider-Man, and even Star Wars characters. In most photos of me as a child, I have something superhero related with me. There is this one photo of me as a kid where I'm wearing an Elvis jumpsuit with a Batman belt and a lightsaber attached to it with a Superman cape and a Batman mask. So yeah, I have loved these characters characters since I was a child, and of course, Elvis. But my favourite hero has always been Superman. He was a huge role model for me growing up, and to be honest, superheroes were kind of my religion. I've never really been religious, and of course I always looked up to my parents and still do, but superheroes were also that to me. They are meant to be the best of us, so I've always really looked up to them to learn my morals from, specifically Superman. As a kid, I would watch Superman 1 and 2 religiously, but I never picked up a comic book. It wasn't because I didn't like reading, because I did. The reason why I never read a comic book was because I was never presented with the opportunity to read one. Where I live, comic book stores aren't really a thing, so I never really had access to them. So my only connection I have ever really had to superheroes are through the movies and animated shows that I grew up watching. And as I grew up, the MCU began, but I had no idea what it was. As much as I loved superheroes, I was an average moviegoer. I saw a trailer that I liked, and I went and saw the movie. I didn't follow any movies from pre-production to post-production. I didn't follow any news outlets accounts or anything like that. I literally would see a poster for a film when walking down the street or a trailer on TV and would decide if I wanted to see the movie. And when the MCU began, I loved it, even when not knowing what any of that really was. I just went to the cinema and enjoyed the new Marvel films. And the same went for the Dark Knight trilogy, the Sam Raimi Spider-Man films, the Amazing Spider-Man films, and especially the Transformers films, although they're not really classed as superhero movies. Superman Returns was alright, but nothing amazing, but I do have a soft spot for it as it is Superman. But coincidentally, the first movie I ever saw twice in the cinema was Man of Steel. I never planned on watching it twice, but I had seen it with my parents, and then my mate asked me if I wanted to watch it, and because I liked the film the first time, I said, yeah, why not? That's the level of average moviegoer I was, but I've always loved superheroes. What really connected me to Man of Steel, though, was the fact that we saw Clark going through his childhood not fitting in and being bullied, and that was something I could relate to. But seeing him overcome all of that and still being hopeful and wanting to do what is right and save people really did inspire me. And today, I can proudly say it is my favourite movie of all time. But still back then, I was just an average moviegoer. I remember the year before watching the Avengers movie for the first time and thinking how weird it was to see all these characters I had seen in individual movies all interacting with one another in one movie. It was so strange but so cool to me. I I didn't even know they were creating a planned universe until after that film. And at that time in my life, I was a much bigger MCU fan than DC fan. Obviously, I loved the older DC films and of course the Nolan trilogy and Man of Steel, but the MCU was incredible to me, and I literally loved every single movie they were releasing at the time. And so what really drew me to DC when the MCU was at its peak was how their new DC films were more serious than Marvel. It provided 
provided me with a nice contrast and seeing a new take on these heroes was refreshing. I could go to the MCU and enjoy the lighter hearted but still brilliant superhero movies and then go to the DCEU and enjoy the more serious and darker but still mostly brilliant superhero movies. Like I said, I had no idea who Zack Snyder was at the time. I also had no idea who any of these directors really were to be honest. I didn't watch Iron Man 1 and think wow, Jon Favreau did a fantastic job. I just went, that was a cool movie, I want to see another. And in 2016, the MCU and DCEU were battling it out and I was loving it as being a fan of both. I loved Captain America Civil War and when Batman v Superman came out, I watched that and I liked it, but not as much as Man of Steel. And I I was upset that Superman died. I was like, what the hell is that about? But even with him dying in that film, I still liked it. Not as much as the MCU movies that have been released so far, but I thought it was a good movie. I also watched Suicide Squad, which I was disappointed by. I found it quite boring, and I honestly haven't watched that movie since I saw it in the cinema in 2016. So still, the MCU was very much on top for me. Then the year after, Marvel had yet again a really great year and DC started off strong as well. I saw Wonder Woman, which I thought was a really cool movie, and I was really getting into the more serious and darker takes with these characters. But then Justice League released, and once again, I had no idea who Zack Snyder was, and I had no idea what happened with that film. I just went to watch it because I liked the last couple of films they made, and the trailers looked cool. And I did actually find the movie alright. It wasn't terrible, it was a fun movie, but something felt off. It felt like I was watching a Marvel movie, movie but worse, and that didn't make sense due to how the previous DC films felt. And the real thing that made me confused about the movie was why did Superman's face look so weird? Something really looked strange. Right from that first scene of him talking to those kids, I could tell something didn't look right. And so when I got home, I searched up, why does Henry Cavill's face look weird in Justice League? And that's when I found out who Zack Snyder was. I learned about the reshoots with the old Avengers director and that Snyder had actually made the previous two movies with Superman in. And because I liked those two films, I was intrigued to see what his version of the film was going to be like, because I thought it sounded more like the stuff that I enjoyed from DC. And the fact that I liked his previous two movies from DC implied that I was probably going to like his true version of Justice League. And then over the next couple of years, I began to get more involved with both the DCEU and MCU. I was loving every MCU movie they were making, but I also had noticed that DC suddenly started making movies with brighter colours and with more comedy in them. To me, it felt like they were just trying to copy Marvel, and I had no idea why, because what drew me to the DCEU so much was that I loved how different their tone was to Marvel. And so now it kind of felt like they were just doing a cheap copy. So seeing DC go from the more serious movies to suddenly far more colourful and comedic movies really felt weird to me. And as I had been doing research into why Justice League was so different to the past DCEU movies, I was getting recommended more superhero news. And that's what encouraged me to begin doing more research on how these films are made and who makes them. And then in 2018, my mind was blown when the Avengers lost to Thanos. And I loved that movie so much that I created a small Instagram account called Our Movie Review. I had about 50 followers and I would post my reviews on films that had just come out but I stopped posting about six months later just due to being busy. So I deleted that account and stayed up to date with movies through general movie accounts. And in 2019, I believe more information was coming out about the Snyder Cut. And that's when I started really watching videos on the film and how different it was going to be. So whilst loving the MCU, I wasn't really enjoying what the DCEU was bringing out. And so I was naturally seeking something better from DC which got me really into learning more about the Snyder Cut, as I knew that there was a better version of Justice League out there. I began watching videos from Ping Pong Flicks, who I watched every day when he made daily videos about DC, and the same went for Dave the Film Junkie, Comic Movie Marks, and Real Anarchy. Those were the main channels that I got my Snyder Cut information from, and I still love them today. I want to mention as well that I am also a 
huge fan of Transformers, so I also got all of my Transformers news from the Raging Nation. And for Star Wars, my go-to channel was Star Wars Theory. I absolutely love both of their channels. And all of these accounts that I have just mentioned are the channels that I have learned from over the years, and my channel wouldn't be where it is today without learning from them. So thank you so much to you guys. But anyway, back to 2019. I would also regularly watch Flashback FM's Snyder Cut videos where he would share behind the scenes shots of things from the Snyder Cut that we never saw in the movie and would explain leaked scenes from Snyder's version of the film. But it was in December of 2019 that my investment in the Snyder Cut went from really intrigued to full on, oh my god, this movie needs to be released. On December 12th, 2019, Zack Snyder posted the black suit image of Henry Cavill's Superman, and my mind exploded. And so did Ping Pong Flicks in his livestream reacting to it. His excitement seeing that image and theorizing what it meant was infectious. And this is what sparked my real desire to see the movie released, because it felt like that there was a clear sign that this movie was very different to 2017's version, and that Snyder actually had a cut available. But then the pandemic hit, so movie production stopped and almost everyone had a ton of free time, including myself. So in April of 2020, I created an Instagram account called Zack Snyder's Justice League in a small attempt to help get the message out there. And when I made that account, I was expecting myself to post about it for a month or two. And then when everyone went back to work, I'd stop posting on it. But surprisingly, only a month after the page was created, the Snyder Cut was announced by Zack Snyder during the Man of Steel watch party, titled Zack Snyder's Justice League releasing on HBO Max in 2021. Finally, after fans had campaigned for four years for the movie, it was actually going to be released. For myself, it had only really been two years of campaigning, but I was still very excited for the movie's release. And over the next nine months or so, my account just exploded. Most likely as the name of the account was the actual name of the movie, but I grew from 100 followers in April 2020 to 100,000 followers on March 17th, 2021, the day before the Snyder Cut released on HBO Max. The timing was incredible. And within those 100,000 followers, I had HBO Max, Tom Holkenberg, the composer of the movie, and Fabian Wagner, who was the cinematographer of the Snyder Cut, all following me. And I even chatted briefly to Tom Holkenberg in direct messages. It was truly a surreal time for me. But if we jump back a bit to November 2020, many of my followers had asked me to create a YouTube channel to talk more about the Snyder Cut. They wanted in-depth breakdowns, and so I thought, well, the pandemic is still going on, so why not? I bought a cheap microphone and the most basic editing software I could find and created my channel. And I called it Our Movie Review after my old Instagram account. My computer at the time had a very loud fan on it, so I had to crank up the background music to try and cut it out, but as my channel started to grow, I thought I needed to invest in a better computer and microphone. So I believe early the next year, I did so. But when switching over from my old microphone to my new one, I realized I actually had the old microphone facing the wrong way. So the reason why the fan was so loud in my videos was actually because I had my microphone microphone facing the computer rather than my face. Hello everybody, welcome to our movie review. Today we will be going through Zack Snyder's Vero posts, deleted scenes and concept art. So it was an embarrassing and expensive mistake, but I think I learned a lot from that. My subscribers also recommended that I change the channel name as I didn't really review movies anymore, and I completely agreed. So it changed to Our Movie News. I wanted a subtle change to not confuse my current subscribers, but one that also makes it clear that I discuss movie news. The only issue I have now is that the Our section of my name confuses some people as they think it means 
means I have my own sources, but obviously I do not. And right from the very start, I have loved making these videos and talking about the Snyder Cut, but after the Snyder Cut released, my subscribers also wanted me to branch out into the rest of DC as well. And so, as a DC fan in general, who actually wanted to do that anyway, I obliged and my Instagram followers wanted the same thing. So, I would talk about the Snyderverse and the DCEU at the same time on both platforms. And as my channel grew, I spent more and more time doing research into how movies are made, and it really helped me understand the film industry, and I can now proudly say I have a true passion and strong understanding for film. And obviously, at the end of 2022, the announcement that the DCEU would be ending and the DCU would be created happened, and I was very upset by that, as Henry Cavill was just coming back, and I loved him as Superman, and then that got taken away, and I was really hurt. And I blamed that all on James Gunn because he had made those decisions, but after I calmed down, I realised that DC needs a strong DC universe, and let's face it, the DCEU was a mess. Even though they were trying to course correct towards the end, the last six years of movies had really destroyed any chances of a strong connected universe. Whether you liked those films or not, the connected universe element was all over the place. Trying to fix that would have been a mess, and if Cavill hadn't been announced to return a month before, I think the pushback would have been far less. But trying to rebuild the DCEU would have meant the new regime were building on weak and controversial foundations. So restarting actually made the most sense, and I liked Gunn's stuff at Marvel, but not his DC projects, so I was cautious about his decision making, and I think my anger of him rebooting instead of keeping Cavill clouded my judgement for a while in terms of who I was blaming and the decisions Gunn was making. I put all the blame on Gunn and was very harsh on his decision making early on. Some decisions I still don't agree with today, but a lot of what I blamed him for weren't really his fault. Henry Cavill never would have needed a comeback if the old regime had just kept him around after Justice League and made a Man of Steel 2 back then. Instead, they destroyed the DCEU and put it in a place that anyone who went back in charge would have been screwed if they had carried on. Instead, they destroyed the DCEU and left it in a horrible place for the new regime. It would have taken a lot to help get it back on track, and when the box office was dying, why risk investing hundreds of millions on movies set in a dying extended universe with expensive actors? Gunn made the tough decision to reboot everything and start again fresh, and hopefully it works out. And the more news I hear from the DCU, the more I like what I hear, which which leads us to about six months ago where my Instagram account seemed to be really divided. I would post about the Snyder Cut and I would get told to move on. I would post about the DCU and I would get called a traitor for posting about the DCU when the account was called Zack Snyder's Justice League. And a lot of people thought that it was time to change the name of the account as it no longer represented what the account was about anymore. And I have to say I pushed back against that request for a long long time as I loved the account name as it it meant so much to me. But unfortunately, at one point, the negative comments did get to me so much that I even put the account up for sale for a bit, but I just couldn't let it go. I had to fix it and bring back my love for that account, which is when I decided to rebrand it. From Zack Snyder's Justice League to our movie news. It was a very tough decision for me, but one that I needed to do for the sake of everyone. It meant I was able to focus on the DCU and allow someone who wants the Zack Snyder's Justice League name to talk about the Snyder Cut to actually do so. And with that change, it meant that all of my accounts across social media have the same name and same consistent brand. Which leads us to today, and I am absolutely loving my time as our movie news. I have a Road to Superman web series that seems to be doing really well, and we have just hit 40,000 subscribers. And so now hopefully, you can see my journey from a casual superhero fan to someone who loves making YouTube videos about these movies. It genuinely happened by accident, and none of this would have been possible without Henry Cavill not being allowed to shave his moustache for the Justice League reshoots. Without that, I probably would never have found out what happened to that film, and 
and this channel never would have been made. It's crazy how some things happen. Now I run a 40,000 subscriber and counting channel that focuses on the DC universe. I try to be level headed and honest to ensure I give you guys the best videos possible. I keep my followers up to date with DC news on Instagram, I give my instant reactions to DC news on X, and I give my more in depth updates and reactions to DC news here on the channel. So make sure to go find me on social media as well. As for the future, my goals are just for the channel to keep on growing, for the DCU to thrive, for the Elseworld movies to be great, and hopefully one day we see Snyder make his Justice League sequels. That would be the ideal future for me. At the end of the day, I just want good DC movies and I don't care who makes them, and hopefully we can all enjoy them together. So that is the story of our movie news. But that is all for today's video. Thank you so much for watching. Please make sure to like and subscribe and turn on post notifications so you never miss a video. I hope to see you here again soon. So until then, have a great day. Bye.